All right. So I want to welcome everybody to the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting. It is Tuesday, May 11th, 2021, 6.30 p.m. Obviously, we're via Zoom. Um, I want to thank everybody for making it here. Just to review our strategic plan goals, um, health and well-being, global competency, multiple pathways and definitions of success, safe, sustainable and effective facilities, and environmental responsibilities. So roll call, Heather Altenberg is here. Kimberly Carr. Here. Bill Saucier. Here. Elizabeth Seifries. Sorry, here. I saw you say here, I just didn't hear it. There we go. Jed McVeigh. Here. Uh, and Laura Danino. Here. And student represent Joey Lavery. Here. Great. And Ellie Gagne cannot be here tonight. She let me know that. So um, thank you and welcome. It's nice to have everyone here. Jen, are you able to put the flag up for the Pledge of Allegiance? Yep. So if we can stand. Oh, I don't know where it went. There it is. Sorry. That's great. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Um, may I have a motion for item two, please? I move we approve the minutes from April 12th, 2021 special business meeting. Great, may I have a second? Second. Thank you, Phil. Um, any discussion or comments, questions? All right, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Uh, Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Thank you, may I have a motion? I move we approve the minutes from April 13th, 2021 regular business meeting. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thanks, Kimberly. Um, any questions or comments? Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Uh, Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Great. May I have a motion? I move we approve the minutes from April 15th, 2021 special business meeting. Great. May I have a second, please? I second. Thank you. Any questions? Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Thanks. Um, and so we're about to head into uh, comments from the public. There are 12 attendees here <laughs> along with the 20th 20 panelists. Um, if there are comments, please keep them to the agenda items. Um, please have them no longer than three minutes. Um, please have them not about individual personnel and uh, please state your name and your address. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak? OK, 
Okay. I hear a kitty that might want to speak, but I don't oh, hear. That's Sammy. <laughs> I'm likes, not. He likes to participate. That's awesome. I love it. Um, <laughs> I don't see any attendees wanting to speak, so I'm going to move on. Um, Joey, you are up. Comments from student representatives. Thank you for being here and for filling us in. No problem. So we'll start off with the club and organization report. The boys lacrosse team has started off their season and what I can see they're doing a great job. They're four and O as of now. So we hope that they keep up that winning streak. Uh, girls softball is also on fire right now. They got a six O winning streak. So Cape athletics definitely picked the four leaf clover on the past couple of weeks. So let's hope that they keep that up. And also I, I do have to report that Cape tennis, the boys tennis team won both their matches yesterday. Now the senior student council is beginning to wrap up all their projects. And we had our last meeting uh, the other day and we look towards uh, the, we look towards um, transitioning resources and projects to the other classes. And unfortunately, Ellie couldn't be here today because she's off running bingo night with the junior, uh, junior, junior student council. So we hope that they're having a fantastic time with bingo and hopefully someone will get lucky tonight. The sophomore student council is also looking to make a cookbook with different recipes from the community. And I'm sure that they'll get some great recipes and I look forward to soliciting that cookbook at a later date. And the Freshman Student Council is uh, doing a Chipotle fundraiser. So if you go to Chipotle and let them know that you're, um, you're coming for this Freshman Student Council, then they'll donate part of your proceeds to that council. And we'd encourage all who can and who want to eat at Chipotle to uh, use our little tag. Uh, looking at student life, we're in the final push of academics. We are almost there. Seniors, we have this week and next week. The rest of the classes have a little bit longer, but we're, we're getting to the end of it, especially with the end of the mini term coming up at the end of this week. AP exams are also starting, so it's a little bit of stress at this point in time, but Hopefully it doesn't overwhelm all the fun activities we got planned uh, in the closing months of school. And the high school is currently looking for 20 to 30 Adirondack chairs. And we'd hope that the community would be able to uh, donate some so that we can have more outdoor seating for lunches and enjoy the beautiful weather that we've been having uh, the past couple of days. And with that, I conclude my final report as a member of this school board. Yeah. I'd like to, I appreciate the opportunity to be uh, among such talented legislators and educators. And it, it's been a truly fantastic experience. So I, I thank you for that. Does any board members have any question about my student report? Thank you. Joey, thank you for being here this year and for your very excellent uh, updates. It's been really great having you and Ellie as well be a part of all of this. So thank you so much and good luck. I hope you enjoy the end of the school year as a senior. Congratulations on graduating. Uh, moving on, um, presentation. Um, from NAMM's Best Communities for Maine Education. So um, I, I'll start and just say that we are so proud um, of our Cape Elizabeth music staff. They were the recipients of the 2021 Best Communities for Music Education designation from NAM, the NAM Foundation, which is the National Association of Music Merchants. And this is the sixth year that we have received this national um, designation. And we're one of two, dis two main districts um, to be designated. So it is quite an honor. And we are, we're so proud of our, um, of our music, uh, music teachers. 
Districts that have been recognized by the NAM Foundation are often held up as models for other educators looking for to boost their own music education programs. And the foundation advances active participation in music making across the lifespan by supporting scientific research, philanthropic giving and public service programs. Um, so tonight, the, I've asked the principals to each talk about the music programs um, in their schools. And we have um, Joanne Lee. Joanne, do you wanna give a little wave? Caitlin Ramsey, Rebecca Bean. I saw Rebecca somewhere, there she is and Rob Wheeler. So I think, I think that's all of you that are here tonight, but um, thank you for coming. And we, um, we are just so proud of you. So Jason, let's start with you. Sure, great. Thank you, Donna. Um, and it's wonderful to see you here tonight, Becky. Um, so before I just talk, I'll, before I speak a little bit about the music department, just briefly, um, a quick update for the board. Uh, we've been working really hard. We've been busy setting up for um, providing more in-person learning. I'd like to thank um, the all of the Pond Cove staff and many many Pond Cove parents who have helped um, to move furniture, assemble furniture. Uh, it's been just absolutely outstanding um, couple of days. So thank you. And so our music department, I am just not surprised at all that we have received this recognition. Uh, I, I know that Becky is really lucky because I visit her all the time because I, you can't walk by that room without popping in. Uh, so and I, we I recently asked Becky to tell me a little bit, uh, some details about um, some of her programming that I often observe. Tonight, that um, the the programming is orf influenced, which I just found out is actually um, developed by a German composer named Karl Orf. And so, what you really see is it's an integration of instruments, movement, singing, and student-centered activities. And that's exactly what you see any time that you're walking by the music room during a class. Um, and and it, I've been. It, it's been so wonderful to see that um, Becky has been able to find creative ways to keep um, keep things really fun, even during COVID, while keeping things safe at the same time. I know she's worked really hard to do that, to keep kids as much as she can moving while they're participating, but in a safe way during COVID and, and sanitizing all the instruments after every single class. It's just, it's amazing the amount of work that goes into, um, into this. And, um, you know, I think it's wonderful to be, Pond Cove really is kind of like the first step of a cohesive program, a K to 12 program, and um, really kind of teaches some of those, those basic music skills um, and students, when they go into the middle school, they're ready to participate. Um, we're building that foundation so they can participate in chorus and general music in the middle school and band programs. Um, so I'm gonna stop there and I'm sure it's, the middle school will be next. All right. Perfect. So I'm not sure, if, I think I'm just gonna do my whole little admin update right now since I have the floor, but quickly it's it's simple. It's, um, we're excited and, I, and I'm gonna echo Jason. We um, I think our school is ready. We have desks in every room. We have our cafeteria set up. And without the help of a large group of parents, and it was always a different group of parents, that would not have been able to happen. So um, it was amazing today. It's seven o'clock. They're in there. They're coming in with their bags and their drills. And, and it was it was really, I think, a great opportunity for our teachers to work with some of the parents and, and to pull all that together was impressive. Um, when I left, the custodians were working to clean out the gym and lug stuff out to the storage unit. So it's it's an all hands on deck effort, and um, it was really nice to see and be a part of that. So so thank a huge thank you to all those people that helped. Um, really quickly, it's not an accident that our music program wins awards. <laughs> it's not that there's nobody else out there doing it. It's just that we do it really really well. Um, so. Uh, in, the, in my experience, I am not a musician, but I know people that are and I get out of their way. So, so that's kind of how it goes with, with the middle school. Um, just a quick overview of the year and, and what the challenges they faced. Um, it's really Caitlin and Emily. And September through now, band 
sectionals and chorus and uh, in music classes have met virtually. So these these guys were meeting virtually, and you know their their stick to itness. You know they're they're relentless at getting kids and and making it work is really what what produces what we see. And when we all get together that once or twice a year to hear them sing it's a, or play, it's amazing. Um, but they maintain their program. They were able to keep students engaged. Um, and, they, and what's really impressive, and it was a goal of ours, was to have kids still experience those things in a pandemic, is that they were able to maintain the normal level of participation and engagement in the, in the program. So I'm um, a huge, that was, that's not easy. Um, in March, as, this, as some of the CDC guidelines changed, we added in-person uh, band full band for grades six, seven, and eight, uh, on, as I said, on Wednesdays, and two after-school jazz ensembles met in March. Um, the big excitement is transitioning um, to students in person for four days, means all the allied arts people basically are coming back into the building. They're still zooming out, um, but they're now gonna be in person, um, in the music room, in the chorus rooms, and full band rehearsals will be outside and remote students will be zooming in. So. Um, kind of flipping the script a little, getting them all in person and now zooming in the remote kids. So not leaving people out. Then lastly, a huge thanks just to the process, to the board, to the, to the schools and to you know, the state or whatever. But um, with the help of COVID money um, and an MSPA grant and a whole lot of zooming, uh, Mrs. Ramsey was able to complete instrumental assessments for the entire fourth grade class. So virtually, you know, with buying all the pieces that she needed, sending them home, bringing them back, putting them in the dishwasher, doing all that stuff um, to pull that off and make it be, provide our kids with as much of a typical experience as they could be. Um, and then coming up, Ms. LeBourne and Ms. Ramsey are looking forward to um, a somewhat unique, but fourth grade band um, and chorus demonstration in two weeks. So kids know what they're interested in and signing up for and, and getting after it a little bit. So a huge kudos. It is not a mistake that we are noted or recognized for, for what our music department does. They're incredible and, and we're lucky to have them. So I think that's it. Thanks, Troy. Jeff? Can I just ask for, is this in fact the principal's report as well? No, it really isn't. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> um, so, so I will just echo a lot of what uh, Troy and, and Jason have said. Um, I think that our we had uh, Cape Elizabeth High School. Cape Elizabeth uh, is known for a lot of things in terms of its education, but I do think that um, our music program is one of the gems. Um, I think it's one of the things that makes us special and has really for years. And there's no question that that's due to the people who have taught the kids over many, many, many years. Um, so I'll start with Joanne. Um, Joanne has. Um, I think more than tripled and maybe quadrupled the size of the chorus in the time she's been here. It's really quite amazing. Um, and it is a real joy for me to walk by the chorus. I haven't been able to do it much this year because they, I mean, although they are practicing now in the auditorium uh, because they need a space that can house them essentially, but it's always been a joy to go in and see how much fun Joanne has with his students, how much fun the students have with one another. It truly is a family. And if you go to concerts, as I have many, many, many times, it is so much fun to, to watch the kids just sing with such joy. Um, and to see Joanne do just a, a masterful job um, uh, highlighting a, a wide variety of students um, in her program. I, I'm very proud of the work that the choral music program has done. Um, and, and Joanne has been instrumental in that. And speaking of instrumental, the instrumental music program. Um, so I will say, I'm gonna hold off on speaking to, about Rob Wheeler because Rob is in an interesting situation. This is his first year and he's 100% remote. Um, and he is actually coming back on Monday. Um, and we're, I am super excited as Rob is, I know to be in the school um, I'm really looking forward to getting him to watching him work with students. I think he's done a great job uh, following the footsteps of Tom Lazat, who was our band director for many years. I would say the hallmark of the of the entire music program is really that it's not it's not it's not really about the music. The music is the vehicle. It's really about the kids and developing and nurturing the kids' skills and helping them to work together in a really talented. 
um, ensemble with one another. It's a team just like the lacrosse team or the basketball team or the football team. Um, their instrument happens to be instruments or voices. Um, so it's really a lot of fun to see. Um, and I'm really happy that Rob is coming back. Um, I have told him I'm gonna come in some Monday nights next year and watch the concert jazz ensemble practice uh, because it was always one of my joys to watch our jazz program. Rob comes to us as one of the most renowned music educators in Massachusetts and particularly in the world of jazz. So um, he's a real gift and I look forward to having him here. And I'm really thrilled that we have kept the size of the music program next year. And that's a real accomplishment given the challenges um, uh, in, in sort of the remote learning hybrid situation. So great job to everybody, especially Rob and Joanne, but all the other educators who bring the students up through the pro program K through eight. Um, it is truly a gem. So music teachers, we are so proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you, that's very nice. And Emily, um, she is, her maternity leave is ending tomorrow. She's back in the building tomorrow. So this was in the middle of her bedtime bedtime routine. So, but she sends her regards and, and thanks. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for being here tonight, music teachers and principals. Thank you for all that you said. I couldn't agree more that um, it's not happening by accident. Um, and this is not the first time that we have seen your faces here at a board meeting to celebrate and honor you all. Um, from Pond Cove to the middle school to the high school, it's just a really phenomenal program. And you do an amazing job leading, teaching, encouraging, and building a program that so many students want to be a part of. So. Thank you for all you give, your heart, your soul, your talent, um, and how much you care. We're really, really so fortunate to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, moving on, we have a COVID update. So lots is going, uh, lots is, is going on. Um, you probably have heard that we were approached by Maine Health. Uh, they contacted us on Friday with the offer of providing a site clinic for the vaccinations of our students um, 12 years and older. So the nurses and the principals and I met with Wendy Osgood, um, who was representing Maine Health to discuss the offer and uh, decide if we wanted to present participate, which we all eagerly agreed to do. So the clinics are scheduled for May 21st for the first dose and June 11th for the second dose. And the site team um, for Maine Health did a visit today to um, the middle school and the high school, well, really walking around the whole campus, trying to uh, determine a site or two sites to do uh, to administer the vaccinations. Um, so I haven't heard what they decided yet, but I'm sure I will hear about that um, tomorrow. Um, paperwork was sent out to the parents yesterday with a due date of May 17th um, to have the paperwork back. It's really important uh, for anybody who's listening in that we get the paperwork back on that date because uh, they have to pull the vaccine. So they have to have a, a really an exact count and we won't be accepting any applications after that date. Uh, stud only students who are enrolled in Cape Elizabeth School Department and who have returned the completed paperwork, which has to be signed with a real signature. So we ran into that glitch today, but um, so if people sent it in with a, an electronic signature, they need to either send it in again with the real signature or stop by the school and, and sign their forms. Um, so only, only Cape Elizabeth students uh, who are 12 and, and older um, who have returned the completed paperwork will be able to uh, participate in the clinic. And that is the hybrid students as well as the remote students. Um, if staff haven't been vaccinated, they also would be able to participate if they are starting with their first uh, dose. Nobody in mid cycle um, can participate. They would have to go back to where they first got their, got their first dose to get their second. Um, we are monitoring um, 
participants for 15 minutes after the vaccine has been administered. So that, that will be happening. And there's a parent uh, question and answer meeting tomorrow night via Zoom at 6.30. Uh, the, the halls were buzzing today. Um, I was over at the middle school um, and, and walked through Pond Cove. Uh, parents were just, I went over to get some pictures and I do, do have some pictures to share with you, but by 11 o'clock, 11.15, they were pretty much done. They had the just worked so hard and the furniture was put together and in the classrooms and um, more, I think more is being washed tomorrow and ready for classrooms. So the furniture that we arrived uh, that we ordered all arrived this week. So we were so fortunate to have, uh, to have that happen. And um, uh, many thanks again to Perry staff and to all the parents. Uh, I think it was about over 30 parents that arrived to help with, the, with moving the furniture and, and assembling. We couldn't start, we couldn't be ready to start without them. So. Uh, really, thank you so much for everyone that, that showed up to help today um, and um, this week. Uh, a group of parents has been organizing a um, ride your bike and walk to school effort uh, so we can get our students to school safely um, with the limited, limited amount of seating that we have in our buses. And our buses are going to do uh, two runs each and um, Many thanks to Perry and Chris Storr and to the, our bus drivers for their flexibility and dedication to transporting their students. So they did a dry run and they are pretty sure that everything's gonna work out fine with the, the two runs. Um, so we wanna thank the parents who have worked on the organization of the, the bike and walk to school. And a flyer went out today to parents to uh, show them where they can park and then off campus and then walk their students in. Uh, so that'll be exciting to see, um, to see all those students arriving in different ways. Um, schedules for the bus uh, routes have been distributed and um, I think we're ready to go. Um, thanks, many thanks to our building administrators who have worked so hard to get this all together with their schedules and um, getting our buildings ready. And um, the teachers, I don't have any pictures of teachers today because they were all meeting when I was over there. Um, and they seem very appreciative of um, the two days, the middle school and the elementary school, having the two days to really plan. And um, there's a lot of planning to do. So they, they were very happy with that. So do you have some Pictures to show you. Uh, Jen, do you want to get that up? The, this is one of our helpers out by the uh, storage bins. He, they're actually moving furniture back in now so that they, uh, that we, um, that we don't need. Okay. And these were three of the moms who were in there. Uh, they were dragging chairs out when I arrived and loading them up into trucks. So um, this is in the, the gym at Pond Cove. So moving the furniture. This is one of the classrooms that's all set up. This is a fifth grade classroom. Um, so the, the desks all got them all three feet apart and, uh, and ready to go. Then the nurses were there today, the team of nurses that are setting up the clinic. So our nurses are in there amongst them. And uh, they, were, they were touring around and looking at different uh, sites for, um, for the vaccine clinic. So that was pretty exciting. So there's lots of excitement going on today. And I don't know if you've seen um, this giant tent, but this is between um, the middle school and uh, Pond Cove in that courtyard, it is huge. So there is supposed to be a divider that will arrive at some point. So we can really actually have two rooms, but it is a very large tent that um, I'm sure will be used a lot. Um, there it is from a distance. So it's, it's big. <laughs> it will fit, it will fit quite a few students. So thanks, Jen. So we are ready. I'm excited to have uh, the kids back. So any questions?
I, uh, I want to say thank you for bringing some pictures and, and bringing those classrooms to us for those of us who haven't been in there and see that. And um, it's so great to have the community helping out. Um, you know, they've wanted to help out and uh, this collaborative event to help bring students back together. It just sounds like it's going so well so far. And um, thanks to everyone, parents, administrators, teachers, students um, that are working together to make this happen. It's, it is exciting, it sounds like. So thanks for that update, Donna. Yeah. Any other comments or questions for Donna about COVID update? All right, so we'll move on to um, administrative reports principles. Um, I don't know, Jason, if you have more to share, if you sure. would like to. Yeah, sure, just a few things. I mean, great. we're just really excited to have, um, you know, these two days have been very necessary uh, and very productive, but we're, we're all excited to have the kids back and particularly um, try out all the new systems that we've come up with. And, and as you know, so Thursday, we'll have just Maroon students still, but we'll be testing out new lunch, recess, arrival, dismissal, busing, all testing out the new systems. And um, we're quite certain things are gonna go well. We'll work out the kinks Thursday and Friday and be really ready um, for Monday to welcome um, more students back for in-person. Um, so it's, we're very, the teachers are very, there's a lot of energy around it. And I think people are um, excited to get the kids together um, once again. And I do just also, I forgot to thank a group and I don't have a list of names, but this morning, a relatively large group of um, Cape Elizabeth parents who are healthcare providers um, provided breakfast for our entire oh. family and it was catered. Uh, so cater, catering, uh, catering company delivered breakfast sandwiches, um, yogurt, fruit, coffee, and then it was distributed to staff. Um, and so that was just absolutely amazing um, and I think well appreciated. So I think I'll stop there. I think um, do you have, if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to, to answer questions. Thanks, okay. Jason. Everything sounds amazing. Sounds great. Troy, do you have more to add or? Of course I do. Don't, you should never give me the microphone. Um, right. So uh, kind of just a couple of things. I think it's really important to remember that school, everything that's always has to happen at school has been happening in addition to all of this planning and doing this. I mean, this time of year is usually starting to focus on next year. Um, I think my dog's gonna go crazy in a second, so I'm gonna move. Um, so it's usually, you know, talking about next year's schedules and talking about and planning all that stuff. Out. And we're very fortunate um, to have people that are great. So they've been doing all that at the same time um, as, as trying to plan for the reopening of schools. So for example, the NWEA testing, it's a state level test, um, recently adopted as a state level test. And all of a sudden now we've pulled that off prior to this whole coming back to school and and we put kids in the best place to, to do that and to do their best. And we're seeing really encouraging scores come back of, you know, in a weird year, still having really high growth. Um, so we're excited about that. We haven't really done a deep dive, but we've done some. So I'm um, a huge thanks to like Jay Kogovic and people like that that have been helpful for us. So my dogs are telling me I'm gonna stop. Um, nobody should come visit my house during a school board meeting, but they do. So, all right, thanks. Thank you, Troy. Uh, Jeff. Oh, I think you might on mute still. Yep. So there we go. So I'm going to talk just about a few end of year things, but I want to focus primarily on project graduation. Um, so just a little bit of background. Um, a lot of people are not aware that project graduation um, was a gift um, from Maine to America. Um, American high schools, American communities about 50 years ago. Um, it's a gift specifically from Oxford County, Maine. Um, one year in the 1980s um, on graduation night, um, tragically there were five students who were killed. Um, and 
out of that tragedy sprang an idea from a group of parents in that area uh, to create a safe graduation night by taking, giving students a fun, um, chemical-free event. Um, and, and it's entirely an investment in, of, in safety, and that's really Project Gradu Graduation's number one goal. Um, and over the years, um, I've been fortunate to go to many Project Graduations, and I will say Cape Elizabeth High School parents do a great job every year of organizing it. Um, this year has some particular challenges because in most years, except this year, uh, the, the key to a safe graduation night and the key to a successful project graduation is you board the kid into, kids into buses and take them as far away from their own community as you can and give them a lot of fun things to do um, just to keep them, keep them occupied. And that's been the formula here, but it can't be the formula this year for a lot of COVID-related safety guidelines on buses and in facilities and those sorts of things. Um, so this year's project graduation committee has pivoted as we've all pivoted many times this year. Um, and I'm not gonna get into details uh, about what's gonna be happening, but I've already shared with the community that project graduation events are going to be on school grounds this year. Um, and today I met with the fields use committee, uh, which exists in Cape Elizabeth, uh, just to review the fields use committee, the way the project graduation folks have planned to use the fields as part of the venues for project graduation events and, um, and to get their support and approval, which they gave to us. Um, members of the committee did ask whether or not the school board had been shared um, sort of some background about project graduation this year and the fact that our fields and and some spaces in the school will be used for project graduation events. And I explained to them that I actually had spoken to uh, the superintendent last week about it with about the, I, the possibility of speaking to the board tonight about that fact. Um, so that is the plan. Again, I'm not gonna get into details. We're gonna keep things as secret as we can, which is also a tradition. Uh, but one of the things we did talk about with the Fields Use Committee is the importance of um, being proactive and communicating with the high school's neighbors um, concerning the fact that there will be some events that will not be usual and not will not be precedent setting. So they understand that it is really an investment of the community in keeping our students safe on what traditionally had been a dangerous um, evening of the year. So that's project graduation. And I just wanna speak more quickly to a couple of things. We had all of our seniors returned with the exception still of some 100% remote seniors, but we are no longer hybrid for seniors as of last Thursday. So seniors have been coming in as well and that's been great to see them. Um, and I think the seniors have really appreciated seeing one another, seeing their teachers um, and being in the school again. So. Um, I think it's been a it's been a great step towards normalcy and and in, and a great investment in next fall. Um, we are also planning on the return of all the rest of our students once our senior seniors leave. The first day everybody will be back will be May twenty fourth. Although we will definitely have a lot of nine to twelfth ninth through twelfth graders in the school also on Friday the twenty first for the vaccine clinic, which will be very exciting. Um, we've been doing a lot of problem solving around the expansion of our opening. Uh, for the ninth through 12th graders, um, and I'm confident we'll work through the problems um, uh, that we know are there. I am excited about the vaccines coming to Cape Elizabeth. Um, I will say I have the good fortune this year of actually teaching a class um, of seniors. So this year, so just a couple of days ago, I asked them just out of curiosity when I learned that we were going to be able to administer the vaccine. I've been sort of talking to Karen Jenkins, our school nurse, trying to predict how many kids have already been vaccinated. So I was just curious what this group of 12 seniors would tell me. And out of the 12 seniors in my class, 11 said they've already been, they've already received at least a first shot and a number are fully vaccinated. So I do suspect that might be somewhat representative of many of our 11th and 12th graders. And I think it speaks, uh, it's further evidence of how seriously this community and the parents and the students are taking uh, uh, COVID-19 um, and I'm excited about that. Um, and I guess I will stop there. Um, we are we are in the early stages of welcoming students back, and we look forward to having even more back in 24. Thank you, Jeff. Um, 
really excited. Oh, Troy's outside now. Um, <laughs> I couldn't help but notice. Um, thanks so much. Uh, Marcy, our business manager, Marcia Weeks, would you like to give us an update, please? Yep. Good evening, everyone. Um, I wanted to first update you about the School Revolving Renovation Fund projects. I just wanted to let you all know that the bids have been successfully awarded to contractors and Colby Company, Scott Simons Engineers helped us with this process to get back on track. And we are scheduled to have the remaining five projects completed but by July 31st. And if you remember, that was the deadline for having the projects completed. So I can't believe that it's already July 31st, 2021, but that's where we are and we are on target. The, the remaining projects include the three emergency eyewash stations, the metal shop at the high school and the roof reinforcement project at the high school. So we are on target and I'll keep you posted um, when, the, when those are finished. So for the monthly financial report, the percentage of the year that has occurred as of April 30th was 83% of the year. The total general fund expenditures were 79% on April 30th. The average percentage spent at this time for the past five years was 79.2%. So we are right on target with the average for the past five years. And we are, um, for the mean average, for the forecasting trend, for the point range um, between the actual projected and, and the actual where we are, is the mean average is a five point range. So this past month, the point range between the actual and the forecast was four points. So this is where we expected to be due to spring sports being in session now and the cost of our substitutes and our facilities expenses. So we're still um, within a nice safe range um, heading into June 30th. So we're watching the expenses now after every payroll period to see where we are because we're just, we're coming to a close at the end of the year. And we will be spending the next month and a half getting ready for our audit. We have our first visit with our auditors in June and we will be doing year end closing practices. So that's what we'll be up to. Are there any questions? Okay. Thank you, Marcy. Thanks. Uh, Kathy Stankert, our Director of Teaching and Learning. Hi, good evening, everyone. So um, as Troy mentioned, in the midst of everything we've had going on, our educators still managed to administer the MEA for ELA and math in grades three through eight and also grade 11. So as you know, this spring, that MEA for ELA and math was the uh, NWA, the spring administration of the NWA. And it's been completed except for a handful of makeups, which will take place in the next couple of weeks. The MEA for science is gonna be held um, at the high school on May 19th and at the middle school the week of May 24th, and that will be for students in fifth and eighth grade, as well as grade 11. And that's for students who are in person um, the, um, the week of May 24th for, um, at the middle school, the um, exact schedule for remote students is, is still being determined. Uh, in terms of professional development, the summer work application process is underway. Projects will be approved and staff notified by June 11th. And finally, the uh, DEI task force continues to meet weekly and we, bi-weekly, excuse me, and we are very much looking forward to um, sharing our progress with you at this month's workshop. Question? All right, thank you so much, Kathy. Um, we have Del PD, our Director of Special Services. Thanks, Heather. Uh, evening, everyone. I have a couple of things to share with the board tonight. Um, one of the pieces is that on April 29th and 30th, we uh, conducted our CDS transition meetings. CDS meaning Child Development Services, where students that are coming in from CDS to Pond Cove 
um, come and we have a meeting or a handoff, you might say, um, and we have a teams uh, that currently work with the students as well as teams that will be receiving them at these meetings. And it went very well. And I would like to thank all those people involved and that includes the administrators, uh, Jason and Sarah and uh, the K, K teachers as well as the special ed teachers and related service providers. Um, so that went very well. I also uh, planning and preparation for extended school year is well underway. And this will take place this year between July 6th and July 30th. And as always, I just kind of go over the numbers of the students that we serve. We're currently serving 180 students. We have 11 students in referral and we have one student out placed. Any, any, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Del. Um, and then Donna, do you have more to share with us? Sure. Um, <laughs> Always, right? Big news last night, the town council approved our budget. I'm sure you heard that. So that is, yeah, very exciting. Um, as other people have said, in addition to getting ready for next week and making it through um, this year, we are... Oops. We are focusing on uh, our next year as well, and um, a lot of interviews have been scheduled. So uh, these administrators are, uh, in addition to all the planning they're doing, they're also uh, scheduling and, and conducting interviews. Uh, so it's kind of a crazy time, but we do have some uh, major interviews uh, coming up that I thought I'd let you know about. Um, on May 17th, we are interviewing for the Director of Educational Technology. Uh, on May 18th, uh, we're interviewing for the Assistant Superintendent position. And um, Thursday, May 13th, um, we are interviewing for the Director of Facilities and Transportation. So um, I suspect that all of those will probably end up into second interviews um, as well. So there's a uh, there is a lot going on now. Any questions? Great. Thank you, Donna. Oh, I, I did want to say that um, Chris Record will be joining us for the interviews that I mentioned. And um, John Springer will be um, participating in the assistant superintendent and director of educational technology interviews. So we're, we're pulling in the, them in to help us as well, so. That's great. Any questions? Okay. So we have new business. May I have a motion please? I move we approve Bianca Lupi for the high school Spanish teacher position. Uh, may I have a second? I second that. Thanks, Kimberly. Um, any questions or comments? This is just a position of um, filling Senora Torres, who is moving back to Spain, if I'm correct. It's not a new position, so. Thanks, Jeff. Um, any other comments or questions? All right, Heather Altenberg is yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volts. Yay. Uh, Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Excellent. May I have a motion, please? I move that we approve Melissa Oliver for the high school social studies teacher position. And a second. My second. Thanks, Jen. And again, this is just filling a position, a vacancy. It's not a new position um, for retirement. Um, any questions or comments about it? She been a social studies like is she at the high school in some way now? Hi, Jeff. Hi, 
sorry, I had to get down to my microphone. Um, so yeah, she's been she's been a part time teacher at the high school for the past eleven years, Kimberly. So she's moving from part time to full time, and we are advertising for the to fill the part time position vacancy created by her moving up moving to the full time position. Thank you. That was exactly what I was curious about. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Bolts. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Uh, next motion, please. I move that we approve Thomas Farmer for the high school technology integrator position. I have a second. Second. Uh, any questions or comments? Okay. Uh, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr? Yay. Phil Saucier? Yay. Elizabeth Seifries? Yay. Cindy Volz? Yay. Dan McVeigh? Yay. And Laura Danino? Yay. May I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the leave of absence request for Catherine Sellers. May I have a second? A second. Okay, so because it's a personnel issue, um, we can't discuss it right now. Um, so we'll go straight to the vote. Um, Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr? Yay. Phil Saucier? Yay. Elizabeth Seifries? Yay. Cindy Volz? Yay. Jan McVeigh? Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Great. Um, I guess I just want for the public to clarify that that wasn't just a, um, if there were questions that the school board had, we would have to move into an executive session. So we would be able to talk about it if we needed to, but because it's a personnel item, it can't be spoken in public. That's all I was trying to say before. Um, may I have a motion? I make a motion that we approve the leave of absence request for Louise Lynch. May I have a second? I second that. Okay. Unless there's somebody raising their hand, we'll move to vote. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr? Yay. Phil Saucier? Yay. Elizabeth Seifries? Yay. Cindy Volz? Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Okay. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the superintendent's nominations of personnel to second year probationary contracts as defined in our packet. May I have a second? I have a second. Great. Uh, any questions or comments? Okay, Heather Altenberg is yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Next up, item G, may I have a motion? I move we approve the superintendent's nominations of personnel to third year probationary contracts as defined in our packet. May I have a second? I second. Any questions or comments? Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. 
and Laura Danino. Yay. I have a motion. I move we approve the superintendent's nomination of personnel to first year continuing contracts as defined in the agenda. That's more accurate. Than I, have that. A, <laughs> I have a second. I second that. Any questions or comments? I'd just, okay, well, I was just going to say oh. congratulations to those teachers um, for getting continuing contracts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks for pointing that out. Absolutely. Um, okay. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. No yay. Saucier. Elizabeth Cypress. Yay. Cindy Volts. Yay. Chad McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. May I have a motion, please? Oh, consideration. Sorry about that. So, may I have a motion? Sorry. <laughs> I move we approve the school board. Well, what are we saying here? School board member. That we I'm, have a school board member on the assistant superintendent interview committee. That's no, what tripped me up for a second too. Oh, well, I was looking at the director of educational technology. Okay. Yeah. I move we approve the school board member on the assistant superintendent interview committee. Um, may I have a second? Second. So any discussion, Donna, are we to discuss and decide right now or is this something to decide at another time? Uh, well, the interview is May 18th, so I think we need to decide now. Okay. Um, I'm happy to be on it. If anybody else is dying for that role and would like to take it on. In fact, I like to be on it. I support you being on it, Heather. I think that's right. <laughs> so then any other comments or anybody else want to fight me for it, so to speak? <laughs> Not busy enough? Um, okay, so should we reword it, Donna, with my name in there? Yeah. So Laura, can you redo that? Sure thing. I move we approve Heather Altenberg on the Assistant Superintendent Interview Committee. Okay, I have a second. I accept the amendment. Um, so all those in favor, Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Cypress. Yay. Cindy Bolts. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. So maybe before we actually do an amendment, we can talk about this one. Um, consideration of the school board member on the director of educational technology interview committee. Is there a board member that would like to be on that? I'd like to do this one. I was hoping you'd say yes to that, Cindy. <laughs> Does anybody else want to do that or is everybody good with Cindy taking it? All right, so with Cindy Volts as the board member, can we have a motion, please? I move we approve Cindy Volts on the Director of Educational Technology Interview Committee. I have a second. Second. Um, all right, uh, any comments or questions? I just wanna th say thanks to Cindy for um, putting in the time and being willing to do it. Um, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volts. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Um, again, for consideration of school board member on the Director of Facilities and Transportation Interview Committee, 
Um, I'm happy to do it. Um, I think this is a long-term project that we're heading into. So perhaps there's somebody who's gonna be here a little bit longer on the board whose term is not coming to an end that would like to fill that role. Otherwise, I'm happy to do it. Is there anybody else who would like that? I don't mind doing either. I don't, I, I have a year longer than you that doesn't add a ton, but um, if nobody else is interested. Why don't I, um, I'm gonna put your name down, Kimberly, unless there's somebody else. Okay. So may I have a motion with Kimberly as a school board member? I move we approve Kimberly Carr on the Director of Facilities and Transportation Interview Committee. Okay, may I have a second? Second. Thank you, Cindy. Any questions or comments? Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr? Yay. Phil Saucier? Yay. Elizabeth Seifries? Yay. Cindy Volts. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. Thank you for stepping up, Kimberly. <laughs> and Laura Danino. Yay. Uh, may I have a motion, please? I move we approve the assistant superintendent job description. I, I have a second. second. Yeah. Second Sorry for cutting you off there. That's okay. <laughs> Thanks, Kimberly. Any questions or comments? We've talked about why we wanted to make this switch. Um, the job description seems pretty straightforward to me. Yeah, Heather, I just have a quick quick comment. I Just to be clear, I know we've said this before, but I understand there may be some confusion that this is a new position. I just wanna make that clear. This is not a new position. Um, this is not, a bud there's no budget impact. It, it is a, um, a title change and maybe some responsibility changes for an existing position. But I just, I understood that there may be some confusion in the community. So I just wanna make that clear. Thank you for that. Jason, are you raising your hand or are you fixing a watch? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> okay. I, Thank you. I, Go ahead, Cindy. Oh, I was gonna say, I do have a question. I read through the description. Is this a new description or we just renamed the prior? Um, and, and I asked because I noticed um, in the end where we talked at the very end of the document for the job description, we've got approval dates from the school board, a history of approval dates from the school board. So I'm just wondering if the school board has previously approved a super, an assistant superintendent role, or is that left over from renaming no, a prior it's, role? It's, it's largely the same as the director of teaching and learning, but we did revise it. And I did go over it with uh, Chris Record, So he's looked at it and um, we have revised it slightly. So when we, when we go to, to um, make that official, it will, all the other dates will be taken off okay. and this date will be put on. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. May I have a motion? I move we approve the affirmative action plan. May I have a second? A second. Uh, questions or comments? Maybe Kathy could. Yeah, I'm wondering. I'm looking but, right at Kathy. Hoping. It came through policy, but it's. I'd say Kathy's uh, show. <laughs> it's an interesting turn of phrase. So <laughs> yes. Well. Um, so we. I. I am. I did suggest to, to the policy committee and, and therefore to the board that um, we uh, change 
our affirmative action plan to reflect the new template that we were sent by our legal counsel. Um, this uh, new iteration reflects last year's adoption of the uh, new Title IX regulations, um, and it now aligns to the non-discrimination and anti-harassment policies and procedures that we revised last year. Uh, notably, it specifies creation of an affirmative action officer, Title IX coordinator job description, which you're going to be asked to vote on as well. Um, and that position has a particular, very particular set of requirements and responsibilities. Um, this new plan also refers to the adoption of policy and procedure regarding the recruitment and hiring of administrative staff. And that's going to be, we don't currently have that policy and procedure, so we'll be discussing that at our next policy committee meeting. Um, and finally, an interesting dimension of this, of this new plan is that it requires periodic assessments of the Cape Elizabeth School Department workforce for the employment of women, minorities, and persons with disabilities. Um, and if an imbalance is detected, um, then the establishment of goals and procedures uh, timeline, timelines to rectify that situation and that requirement aligns directly to the school boards and school departments um, goals around diversity, equity, inclusion. So I think it's a, it's a very positive change. Thank you, Kathy. Are there any questions? And, and Kathy, do we have an assessment uh, scheduled or a, a plan for an to conduct an assessment? Not currently. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Voting Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Holtz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Uh, may I have a motion? I move we approve the affirmative action officer Title IX coordinator job description. May I have a second? I second. So this is the um, the motion that Kathy was referring to a moment ago. Is there any more? Are there any more questions? Okay, yeah. Heather Altenberg. Oh. I, I sorry, I didn't see that. I, uh, when we discussed in policy committee, I just wanted to make sure that my understanding was correct. This is not um, a sort of a solo position, a, a separate position necessarily. These are responsibilities of someone who would be the Title IX coordinator, but these responsibilities could be attached to uh, one of the administrator positions or appropriate yeah. positions. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. That, that's correct. It's is this um, a, the, way that, okay. the way that the job description is written it's um, it's the person who carries out those those responsibilities who bears that title is serving concurrently as an administrator. Okay. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Bolts. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Now I have a motion. I move we approve the recertification plan. I have a second. Second. Thank you. Donna, can you speak to this a bit? Um, I'm going to give this to Kathy to speak to. This is her okay. baby. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> so this, um, 
this rep this plan before you represents an overhaul of the previous plan, which was adopted in 2013. Uh, that old plan included components that are no longer required by the main DOE. Um, and it felt like, honestly, an exercise in paper pushing more than a recognition of professional learning. So for the past year, the recertification committee worked on revising this. The goal was to make the process of renewing one's certificate more meaningful by eliminating forms and requirements that were actually getting in the way of earning professional development credit. The new process, I don't know if you've had a chance to read the plan, but the new process asks educators to focus on the professional development activities that have actually made a difference in their practice and to explain what they learned and how they've used it. Another important change is the removal of the Director of Teaching and Learning from the Recertification Committee. Now the teachers and ed techs are responsible for monitoring their peers' professional learning just as for example, the administrators monitor the professional learning of other administrators. It, this plan went into effect on October 1st on a trial basis. It's been positively received, and so we are now bringing it to you for formal school board approval. Um, and then after this vote, you'll be asked to vote on um, the uh, a, a revised job description. Um, which reflects the changes that we made and also the fact that the mentorship was taken out of recertification by the state and put into um, evaluation. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay, Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries? Yay. Cindy Volts? Yay. Jen McVeigh? Yay. Laura DeVito? Yay. May I have a motion, please? I move we move. approve policy JFABD, education of students who are homeless. Oh, I think oh, whoops, I we skipped. have one Sorry. more before that. Sorry, I skipped. That's OK. I move we approve the recertification committee representative job description. Great, may I have a second? Second. Thanks, Kimberly. And so this is what Kathy was just referring to. Are there any other questions? Okay, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Uh, Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volts. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Great. Uh, so now a motion. Elizabeth, take <laughs> it away. That. I was just eager to get to policy. I know you are. <laughs> I move we approve policy JFABD, education of students who are homeless. I have a second. Second. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth, you want to speak to this for a moment? Just quickly, this is a second read. There weren't any comments from board members or the public on this policy, so it comes back to you. Um, it's a brief policy, and the procedures that are required are um, in um, in our packet tonight. We, do, um, we don't technically have to approve them, but they're in here for us to read and see. So um, the one tweak that we did make last time that I'll just point out again is making sure that we're talking about the student and not calling them um, a homeless person, but a person who is homeless. That was the one of the major changes. I like that change. Any questions? Okay, Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volts. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Um, so Elizabeth, this is not for vote. Am I correct? Oh, it is. No, it is. It's, it's a second reading. Sorry, I misread that. Uh, you want to make the motion? Sure, I move we approve policy JFC dropout prevention committee. And may I have a second? Second. 
Okay, can you speak to this a little bit, please? Sure, this also um, came back to policy committee without um, comment from the board or the public. Um, it's funny because it's, you know, it's a policy named a committee. It was, it's a funny thing, but um, we need, we are mandated to have a policy and the dropout prevention committee. So you'll see um, these things popping up again later in the agenda. Um, and what I will also note is that many of these policies or different mandates um, say that we have to have a plan. And one thing that we have been doing in policy committee is if it's actually called a plan, there is a shared folder for administrators in our school department where all these plans reside and they don't live in the policy manual. It's important that the board kind of is aware and we, we're meeting our requirements and have these plans, but you won't find them in the policy manual. Um, later on in you know, the next, I guess we'll, we'll um, have a motion about it, but there is a dropout prevention plan um, just so that the board is aware of it, but it, it's again, not in the manual. Thanks for that clarification. Any questions? Okay. Mark is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Thanks for Heather Frozen, I can't tell if my name was called or not. Hi, I think I'm back. Can you hear okay. me now? <laughs> yes. Um, I was frozen for a little bit. Um, okay. Kimberly, I didn't hear you. Did you say yay? I did. Okay, yes, thanks. Did. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. So one of the other things, just a little side note, last night at the town council meeting was that town hall is opening to the public um, soon. So maybe next year we will be having school board meetings in person and not via Zoom. And we won't have to wait for connections and for people to get unfrozen, <laughs> which is a nice thought to be together. Um, Elizabeth, would you like to continue speaking about second readings, please? Sure, uh, we don't have to vote, but um, we do have procedure JFABD-R, which is the procedure that goes along with the education of students who are homeless. Um, so the board can familiarize themselves with that and it will live in the manual because it is a procedure. Um, there is a dropout prevention plan. Um, since it's a plan, like I said before, it will live in that shared folder that all administrators have access to and um, meets our requirement to have that plan. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. Great. There was a lot of business to take care of tonight. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> um, we're on to agenda requests. Are there any agenda requests? Great. Um, committee reports, paths. Cindy, is there has there been a um, meeting? There was not a meeting last month. Yeah. The next meeting is this Thursday. So yep. nothing to report there. Great. And Elizabeth, do you have any more about policy? Nothing about policy. I can just skip ahead that um, our policy committee meeting is typically the last Monday of the month, but the last Monday of this uh, month is Memorial Day, so we have bumped it back to May 24th. Okay, so it's a different different type of date. Thank you. Um, DEI, uh, we're gonna meet tomorrow and uh, spend a little time talking about what to present to the school board, which will be fun um, among other things. But um, the last DEI meeting, we spent talking about um, Joe Prasad, who had come and presented to us the time, the meeting prior to that. Um, she is um, the person that we were talking about doing an equity audit and she was very well received by the, um, by the committee. Um, and so we just, we had conversation around her and how we felt about her. And so 
Um, I believe we're gonna be moving forward in that direction and figuring out those steps of how to bring her in. Um, she's dynamite. She is just dynamite. And um, we're really lucky to have her personality, her energy and her wisdom come to this district, I think. Um, so Kathy, thank you for bringing her in for, for us. Um, it's super exciting. And the whole committee unanimously was really excited about it. So I don't know if you have anything to add, Kathy, but. I'll save it all for the workshop. Okay, great. Perfect. I, Which I, I'm really excited to hear about. We had said back in September, that we wanted to get the DEI committee going and see what's happening um, and give it time to, um, to make some progress. So um, I think board members are really looking forward to hearing about it. So thank you for being willing to do that and prepare for that. Um, a quick question, Heather. Mm -hmm. uh, the equity audit you discussed, does that meet the requirements of the assessment recommended in the affirmative action plan we just approved with that? Satisfy that, That's to be determined. Okay. Okay. Um, Cindy, would you like to, is there something about technology committee to fill us in on? Uh, or again? Technology committee hasn't met. I think we're okay. on hiatus until our new um, director of educational technology is in. So that makes a lot of sense. There. Great. Um, Bill, do you have anything about finance committee? I know Donna spilled all the good news, but you could yeah, reiterate Donna spilled it. the good news. Um, <laughs> briefly, though, I just want to, um, so since our last meeting, we thank the, the uh, town council for the thoughtful engagement with us at our budget presentation and then their unanimous support of our budget. Um, it's a budget that we're all very proud of, as I know you all know, and I think it's um, responsible budget makes targeted investments to allow us to open five days a week. Um, and I just want to say it's the budget, uh, validation vote is on June 8th. So it's the day of our next meeting. So it's the last chance for us to say that at a meeting. So that is our, our update. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks. Um, and before we are at heading into announcements for upcoming meetings, I do want to say, um, for the public and for everyone here that Chris record will be, um, our new superintendent will be. Um, available, we'll be having a Zoom sort of meet and greet for families and community members. Um, he's excited to get to know um, people here in Cape Elizabeth and start making some connections. It will be June 2nd um, at 6.30. He'll do um, an introduction and then there'll be the opportunity for some questions and answers. So that's happening um, the night of June 2nd. Um, and the Zoom link should be available on our website. Um, tomorrow, May 12th um, at 3.30 is the next DEI task force. Um, PAS, as Sydney mentioned, is May 13th, the next day, Thursday at 8.30. Policy committee, as Elizabeth mentioned, is May 24th at 3. Um, we do have a sub-finance committee set up for May 25th at 8.30. Um, the morning of the school board workshop where we will hear about DEI on May 25th at 6.30 p.m. I think that's all the meetings coming up for the public to know about. Um, may I have a motion? I move we adjourn. May I have a second? Second. All right, Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Boltz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Janino. Yay. Thank you, everyone. And again, thank you, Joey, for an amazing year as our student rep. I hope you all have a great night. Thanks so much.